On November 23, 2016, a man who suffered a gunshot wound was dropped off at the Conway Regional Medical Center emergency room in Conway. So Conway police wanted to find out who it was that just dropped this guy at the emergency room. They knew who the guy was, but they didn't know who dropped him off. They had identified the man, the gunshot victim, as Gary Phillips, but who dropped him off? So it turned out that the emergency room staff had recorded the license plate of the car that dropped Gary Phillips off at the emergency room. Police were able to take that information. They ran it through ACIC. A vehicle came back and it matched the vehicle that dropped Gary Phillips off at the emergency room. And it turned out the vehicle was registered at Gary Phillips' own home address. So police took a little trip to Gary Phillips' home and there they were able to find the vehicle. It was a blue 2004 Kia Sorento. In the vehicle, they found that there was a bullet hole in the driver's seat. It looked like the bullet had traveled from the back seat to the front seat going through the actual seat and even the threads on the front seat were kind of blown outward to show that that was an exit hole. So it looked like Gary Phillips got shot in his own vehicle but who drove him to the hospital? By talking to family members, police learned that the person that dropped Gary Phillips off at the hospital was likely Shelby Stivers and they got a location on Shelby Stivers. So Shelby Stivers was actually in Pulaski County. Shelby Stivers just happened to have an arrest warrant out of Faulkner County. So Shelby was arrested and transported back to Faulkner County where police could actually interview him. Now, when police interviewed Shelby Stivers, Shelby told police that Gary Phillips asked Shelby if Shelby could help him get some K2. And Shelby was like, yeah, I can, I think I can contact Kaylee Roberts. So they contacted Kaylee Roberts and Kaylee was like, you can get some from this guy named Little Johnny. Well, Shelby Stivers was like, you know, I think I can trust Little Johnny because we spent time in jail together. This is a problem. Like, I don't understand why people do this. They are literally in jail because they committed crimes too. And yeah, maybe in your mind you think, oh, I made a mistake and I'm in jail for making a mistake. So they're probably in the same boat. Don't. You shouldn't. Just don't. Trust people that you don't actually know. Spending time with someone in jail is not actually knowing them. But I digress. So Shelby Stivers was able to get in contact with Little Johnny and Little Johnny was like, yeah, I know a guy that can help you get some K2 come by and pick me up. So Shelby Stivers and Gary Phillips drove to the Stacy Motel in Conway, picked up Johnny Reed, who was living at that hotel with his girlfriend. And then together, the three of them drove to Salem Park Apartments. That's where they were supposed to meet whoever it was that was selling the K2, but the person didn't show up to sell the K2. So little Johnny told Shelby Stivers like, hey man, let me get your phone. I'll call him. And little Johnny called the supplier from Shelby's phone. And so they decided that they were going to meet somewhere else. So they met in the parking lot of the draft. Now, when they got to the parking lot, the supplier was standing out there. So as soon as they arrived, the supplier got into the back seat of Gary Phillips' car. Now, when he got in the back seat, he got into the rear driver's seat immediately behind the driver. So the supplier asked Gary Phillips, like, do you have the money? And Gary Phillips was like, yes. So he starts to pull the $500 out of his pocket to give the to this guy and this guy pulls out a gun points it at him and is like give me all you got so just like that the situation goes from someone buying k2 to them getting robbed now a, a gunshot goes off pretty fast and shelby styers gets out of the vehicle and just runs as fast as he can he says he said he headed to the woods and from the woods, he could see a little bit kind of what was going on. So he sees Gary Phillips in his car. He's not really moving. And he saw the other two guys, little Johnny and the dealer get out of Gary's car and take off. So Shelby Stivers headed back to Gary Phillips' vehicle. Now, when he got back to the vehicle, 
he was like, Gary Phillips did not look good at all. And he's like, I got to get this guy to the hospital. So he tried to move Gary Phillips out of the car seat and he had a little bit of trouble, but Shelby was able to get Gary Phillips over enough that Shelby could drive the vehicle to the hospital, but he was kind of sitting on Gary Phillips' legs a little bit. So Shelby Stivers got Gary Phillips to the hospital, and then he was just not sure what to do. He wasn't trying to just dump Gary Phillips off at the hospital, but like he felt like he didn't really have a place to be there. It wasn't his family member. And so he did what he thought was the right thing to do. He contacted Gary Phillips' son and told him what happened so that he could come to the hospital. And Gary Phillips uh, told Shelby Stivers, like, okay, we'll just head back here to Gary's home. So that was how it ended up that Shelby Stivers drove Gary Phillips' car back to Gary's own house. Now, police weren't super quick to just believe what Shelby Stivers told them, but the fact that Shelby Stivers said that the gunshot came from the back seat and that the dealer was sitting in the back seat behind the driver, that matched up. And then they were able to find video surveillance from two businesses that were in that area around the draft. And that surveillance footage backed up the rest of what Shelby said happened. They could see Shelby head into the woods and then the other guys run off and then they saw Shelby come back to the vehicle. Several days after the shooting, police were able to bring little Johnny in for an interview. Little Johnny's actual name was Johnny Reed Jr. He was literally little Johnny. So little Johnny backed up a lot of what Shelby Stivers said. Little Johnny said that Shelby called him and asked him about getting a hold of some K2. And little Johnny was like, I think I could get some from this guy I know. The guy that he knew, he knew as Kendrick. So he backed up the part about Shelby and Gary coming to the hotel to pick him up and then going to the apartment to meet Kendrick. But then Kendrick wasn't there, so he used Shelby's phone to call Kendrick, and they reset the meeting place for that restaurant parking lot. Little Johnny did say when they got to the restaurant parking lot that Kendrick got in the driver's rear seat behind the driver, but then his story kind of started to differ a little bit from Shelby's story. So according to Little Johnny, Kendrick got in the vehicle, and then he pointed the gun at all three of them them. Little Johnny said Kendrick pointed the gun at him, Gary, and Shelby. Little Johnny also said that at one point Shelby pushed the gun back away from it being pointed at him and that's when the gun kind of went off. He said that he didn't think Shelby had anything to do with it being fired but just that Kendrick pulled it back and was going to adjust the grip on the gun when it went off. If I was hearing this I would automatically think like that's crap. It's crap because the bullet was straight through the driver's seat, right? In my completely amateur opinion. Little Johnny also said that Kendrick didn't just steal money from Gary, that Kendrick also stole $100 from him. According to Little Johnny, he didn't know how to get a hold of Kendrick, really. He didn't know Kendrick's last name. All he knew was the number that he dialed from Shelby Stiver's phone. The day after Little Johnny was interviewed, police received an anonymous call identifying the driver of the vehicle that came to pick up Kendrick. That person was identified as Vanessa Lyons. So police went to Vanessa's last known address and sure enough, the same vehicle that they saw on the surveillance video, a silver Toyota sedan, was in Vanessa's driveway. When Vanessa was asked by the police, like, do you know why we're here? she automatically started crying. According to Vanessa, she met Kendrick like a week earlier and they quickly became heavily involved with each other. She said that on the night of the shooting, Kendrick called her and asked her to come give him a ride because he was going to hit a lick. So she came and picked Kendrick up at a gas station close to where he actually lived, that apartment complex, and drove him to the restaurant parking lot. She dropped him off and she went where she couldn't see what was going on and waited until Kendrick called her back and told her to pick him back up. Now, when Kendrick called her, she came and picked him back up, but then she stopped a little ways down the road and picked up a friend of Kendrick's, little Johnny. 
Vanessa said that she took Kendrick and little Johnny to a liquor store that was closer to Mom L. She went in, got some liquor for them, and then she dropped little Johnny back off. Now, later in the day, she says that Kendrick called her again. She came and picked up Kendrick and little Johnny and took them to the Budget Inn in Conway. They gave her money and she went and rented a room for everyone in her name. I don't know. To me, it just seems like Kendrick is using Vanessa. Vanessa had photos of Kendrick on her phone that she showed police and police were able to use those photos to identify the person Vanessa knew as Kendrick as being actually Keenan Beecham. Now, Vanessa did say that she thought his last name was possibly Breacham and that sometimes he went by KB, which, okay, sounds like Keenan Beecham. So they did a photo lineup and she was able to identify Keenan Beecham as being who she knew as Kendrick. So police went back to Little Johnny and Little Johnny then started to tell police like, yes, I did get in a vehicle with uh, this girl and Kendrick after the shooting. Yes, we went to a liquor store. Yes, later on we went to the Budget Inn. And police were like, listen, bro, that your story doesn't really make much sense. It doesn't make much sense that you're saying that you went and got in a vehicle with him immediately after he held you up and stole money from you, but you didn't know anything about this. And then later on you go to a motel with him. So little Johnny ended up admitting that, yeah, he knew that Gary Phillips and Mr. Stivers were probably going to be held up. Yeah, he knew that there was going to be a weapon. And yeah, he knew if something went wrong and they ended up being shot, that there was a chance of injury because there was a gun involved. Little Johnny revealed something in his second interview that police didn't know. Little Johnny told police that when he got into the vehicle with Kendrick and this girl, that there were two kids in the car, too. So police went back to Vanessa and asked her about that. And she did admit that when she went to drop off and pick up Kendrick and little Johnny, she had a one-year-old and a 10-year-old with her. So little Johnny, Johnny Reed Jr. was charged with capital murder in the murder of Gary Phillips. In January of 2018, he accepted a plea deal and pled guilty to manslaughter. He was sentenced to 30 years in the Arkansas Department of Corrections. It looks like right now, Johnny Reed will be eligible for parole at the end of 2026. Vanessa Lyons, for her part, was charged with capital murder and endangering the welfare of a minor first degree. In August of 2018, Vanessa Lyons accepted a plea deal. She pled guilty to manslaughter and endangering the welfare of a minor. She was sentenced to 10 years in prison for the manslaughter and two for the endangering the welfare of a minor plus three years suspended for the endangering the welfare of a minor. Now, Vanessa Lyons has been released from prison. Now, Kendrick, who is actually Keenan Beecham, got in trouble in the Faulkner County Jail. He got in trouble while he was waiting for his charges to go through the court process. So Keenan Beecham got an additional charge for furnishing prohibited articles. The way that this charge happened was that Keenan Beecham was part of a what seemed like a routine search. All of the men were being brought out of their cells and being strip searched. Now, as part of that strip search, he had to do the old squat and cough. And when he did, a phone started to become visible from his rectum. So he was asked to pull the object out of his rectum and out he pulls a flip phone. But he put it behind his back and he snapped it before giving it to the officers. And all I can think is the poor officers. So Keenan Beecham was charged with capital murder and possession of firearms by a certain person. He was then charged with furnishing prohibited articles. Keenan Beecham accepted a plea deal in 2018. He pled guilty to first degree murder and possession of firearms by a certain person. He was sentenced to 25 years in prison on the murder charge and five for the firearm, but those times are set to run consecutively. He was also sentenced to five years for the flip phone, and that case is set to run consecutively to the murder case. So that is a total of 35 years in prison. He is not set to go up for parole until possibly 2037. Thank you for watching A Case for Arkansas. Please remember to subscribe, like, comment, and share.